Hey, Keith here again. Welcome back to Set the Child Free. Two or three videos ago, I did an introduction to Set the Child Free and a confession of sorts. And I just talked about, I'll go ahead and say it again. I, I am a hypocrite. I don't always do what I say. I don't always say what I mean. I'm, I'm an actor in this, in this life, you know? And I think we all are from time to time. So that said, set the child free. I told you that I come at, at life from a biblical worldview. And one of the things I remember hearing many, many years ago, and I didn't always buy into it, was God loves you and he has a plan for your life. I looked at my life and I said, wait a minute, God loves me? It sure doesn't look like it. He has a plan for my life? Well, so far this plan is pretty crappy. I don't like it very much. And the more I, I read the Bible, and the more I prayed, and the more I thought about it, the more I began to walk by faith, I began to understand what this meant. God loves you and has a plan for your life. Now, if you've heard that before, maybe maybe you're cynical. Maybe you accept it fully. Maybe you've never heard it, and you don't know what to think. Well, let's take a look at a couple of verses, a couple of passages in the Bible. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. It's called the NIV, and uh, you can find it online at Bible Gateway or or any other any Bible app that you might have. U Version. And uh, anyway, this, this first is in the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And this is God speaking to Jeremiah. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So God starts out right there with Jeremiah saying, I have plans for you. I know the plans that I have for you. I know what I've put you on earth to do. And the plans I have are to see you prosper. I don't want to see you harmed. I have plans to give you hope and a future. And I looked at that in, in looking at it for my own life, and I was saying, no, I'm not very prosperous, and uh, I've been harmed. I haven't had a lot of hope, and the future's pretty bleak. And I think most people can relate to that, that uh, we, don't, we don't see our life always as being very prosperous, maybe. Maybe we've had a lot of harm. I know I certainly have. And this is what Set the Child Free is all about. It's coming to a place where we understand, like God said to Jeremiah, he says to you and he said to me that he has plans for us. And those plans are to prosper us and not to harm us. And I don't mean to prosper us like I'm going to have a brand new Corvette. You know, I'm going to get a Bugatti Veyron. No, it's, it's, I'm going to have $50 billion. I'm going to be richer than Elon Musk. No, it's not, it's not that kind of prosperity to, to be looking just for cash, for possessions. It's deeper than that. It's much deeper than that. Plans not to harm you. That doesn't mean we won't be... Uh, affected by illness or disease or broken bones physical trauma to our bodies it doesn't mean we, we won't go through certain trials bereavement um, the loss of a, of, a, of a father or a mother the loss of a cousin a brother you know plans to give you a hope God wants you and I to have hope. What is hope? 
Hope is, is, it's walking by faith. It's seeing things that haven't come to fruition yet. Like when you're a little kid and maybe you were hoping for your birthday, you were hoping that you got a certain gift or you got to go to a certain place and do a certain thing, or you were hoping that you had a party and certain people were going to make it to your party. Or maybe you had hope at Christmas time or any other holiday, depending on your where you, where you come from. But you've, you've had hope when you were a little child. Maybe you hoped you had a particular teacher going to school. Maybe you hoped you didn't have that same bully in your class this year. You had hope. And you had a future. I remember when I was very young, wondering, you know, will I ever be 30 years old? Will I ever be a teenager? Will I ever be in my 20s? What am I going to do? What am I going to be like? What's going to happen to me? What is my future going to be like? What do I want to be? What do I want to do? Well, I still haven't made up my mind. Okay, I'm still, I'm still about 12 years old in, in a lot of respects. But remember that. God loves you. He has a plan for your life. He has plans to prosper you, not to harm you. He has plans to give you a hope and a future. Now in the Psalms, just a, a few books over, in the Psalms, uh, chapter 139, Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. Again, this is the, the New International Version. Psalm 139, verses 13 through 14. For you, this is the psalmist talking to God. It's a song, it's a prayer, it's a poem. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. If we come and we recognize that God created our inmost being, that who we really are, that soul, that the feeling, the pain, the joy, the sorrow, the love, the hate, everything in our emotions and our thoughts and our, our hopes and dreams and everything that goes with it. He created our inmost being. The self, the person that we are, our spirit, if you will. God created that. And he knit us together in our mother's womb. And when I first heard that word, you know, I thought of knitting, with knitting needles. And as I've gotten older, I've thought more about it. He's knit us together in our mother's womb. And I think of the double helix of a strand of DNA and how that double helix is connected. And it looks like a, like a ladder, like a twisted spiral ladder going up. And to me, that's, that's knitting. It's, it's being knit together, the DNA. The, the, the DNA that come, came from our father and our mother, whether we knew them or not, whether we look at them as our father and mother, but those, those two, two things, the sperm and the egg, came together and created a whole new, a whole new bit of DNA, different than any other that had ever existed or ever will again. He knit us together in our mother's womb. That's a miracle. That is a miracle of life that, that you were made, that you came to be, that that one particular sperm and that one particular egg at that one particular event actually came together to make you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, you and I both. And though God doesn't have plans to harm us, a lot of times harm comes to our lives. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that in the upcoming videos. We're going to talk about trauma. As I mentioned in the introduction video, we're going to talk about 
the physical harm, physical abuse that we went through. We'll talk about sexual abuse, psychological, emotional abuse that we, that we may have experienced, the stuff of life that hurts that we may have experienced. And it's not a competition, okay? What, what your neighbor experienced, what was, what was traumatic to them, you may look at that and go, eh, I don't think that's so traumatic. But remember, someone else can look at your life and say, eh, I don't know why they're thinking that's so traumatic. Each one of us is different. And life events affects every single one of us in unique ways. There are things that might cross over, but we're all unique. We are all different. We are all special in God's eyes. Whether the trauma was experienced in our mother's womb, there was disease. We were born imperfect, pieces missing, needing, having special needs. Maybe the trauma. Some people talk about being able to remember coming out into the world for the first time. I don't remember that. There may be trauma in knowing that you were born via C-section, like I was. I always felt less than because I wasn't born in the normal, natural way. It's kind of kind of silly, you know, to think, well, I didn't come from that way the, the way everybody else does. But my mother experienced severe trauma, and I was experiencing that as well. Even though I didn't know it at the time, according to what I was told, there was a lot of stress happening on the mother and the baby, me. So we're going to talk about those things. We're going to talk about trauma. We're going to talk about God's plan. God's original plan for our lives and how we can get back to it. How we can set the child free. God bless you and I will see you real soon in the next video. Thanks.